tēnā koutou ko hene wirangi tōku ingoa ki te taha o tōku whae no kaunga ni wau. Ko mau mau kai te maunga tapu ko nuhaka te awa, ko rongo mai wahine, taku tūpuna whaea. She was absolutely fabulous. Um, and I reign from this queer. Hey, so you can't tell me anything because my tūpuna could never be told either. <laughs> tēnā koutou. Ki te taha o tōku matua whāngai tuarua. I got three dads, you see. One reigns from the from from Peria up north that I never knew. I was six, uh, three months old in my in my mother's whare tangata, in the whare tangata o tōku fire, and uh, he, she went bye bye. <coughs> and so my second, my this is my second papa, Matua Fangai, no Tauranga Mona. He's the man that I knew as my papa, or my ure too. Tōku ure tu. From Tauranga Mona. Here is my papa. Ki te taha o tōku matua whāngai tuatahi. Ko tā manuhiri tōna hapu. Ko muriwai tōna marai. Ko hikurangi tōna maunga. Ko horauta tōna waka. Anei taku kuia. Ki te taha o tōku whaia. And she was the most elegant queer I ever knew. She taught me about elegance and walking in elegance and elegance in our eloquent in our real, every way, form or matter. And you couldn't chuck a big lo loaf of bread on the table without her saying something in a plastic bag. This is my crower who was a beautiful... Now I'm coming here because I want to talk to you about this. I want to talk to you about these queer crower. You know, your greatest gift to your mogobuna is the very same story and the same pictures that I'm putting up here. It's about your maunga. It's about the, not just what they were, but the stories of, of the maunga mawau, the beautiful stories of, of Momokai and how it got its name in a fight with Ngā, Ngā Puhi and Ngā Kahungunu. And Ngā Puhi were the same. They fought. Kahungunu never fought a single battle. In his whole entire life, he knew how to negotiate, as he's known for eight wives. <laughs> hey, so these have huge stories that you can do and make this and gift this to your children. This is where the gift starts. It doesn't start from anybody giving you permission. You don't need permission. To take back your story, your pūrāko of your maunga, your sacred maunga, and hand them on a USB stick to our modern rangatahi. It's there's you haven't got no excuse anymore, people, to begin to sing them your song. When I grew up, I learned about this pahara kike, as we heard, as we heard Leone talking about the pahara kike. This is my pahara kike, or part of it. See, I had little pinkies in there. Hey, naughty pinkies. Hey, look at her, stunning. Her name is Hinewirangi Sage, as mine is Hinewirangi Rosemary. You just need a Hinewirangi time. Hey. And that's my beautiful daughter. But the, the, we learned about the Pahara Keke because every front that ever had a fan like that, people, these two were the Pakeke. That's where it comes from, from the pa harakeke. And unless you know how to keep that pa harakeke well, you know, you have to start thinking about the pa harakeke that you create around your whare. Let's get real and let's start thinking about some of the things that we need to do in order to take us on the journey of putting together a ori ori. The lullaby. Hey, it took me a long while. And I want to share that story with you because this is the man that taught me so many things about how the importance of waiata. And it was the kind of lesson that taught me about how to take my voice back. I come from a space of being raped as a child when I was six years old. By the time I'm 15, I try to die and, and jump off three-storey buildings. I come out of a mental institution onto cocaine, heroin and LSD, and I still am trying to die in the year 2000 
was the first time in my life that I remembered I wanted to live. I'm 19 because 19 years in living. And I had to learn to sing my soul back into being. I had to learn the lessons for all of that and went through the processes of taking my soul back and working with it and walking with it. I did everything that I tried to do to kill me because I didn't want to live in a world that was the way it was. So I began to sing. And this is the first way that I learned how to sing. There are four doors in the voice that I had to learn. And the first door, the door of the puku, the door of the kroa, the door of the kuya, was in my puku. So I had to learn there and I had to go there because part of that learning to sing was from that puku because also wahinema, that's where we store the pain. And that's why you th we have problems with our puku and with our birthing houses. Because you see, down in the puku is a whare tangata, the house of all humanity, the oldest and the most ancient of houses. And you talk about the whare whakairo. The whare tangata is the oldest. It's the most ancient, more ancient than the whare whakairo. Have a look at that. Because every one of us came out of that whare. And think about the sacredness and whakahoke at the tapu kei roto i te whare tangata, put it back there. And you need to do that with your spice. Stop calling your mother. That's a, have a look at decolonizing the real, and you will find that we didn't have such a thing as mother nor father, but we did have ure tu, te kākono mairangi atea, for our said father. Or we had te whare tangata, tēnā koe tōku whare tangata. Whakahoke at te tapu, men folk, women folk. And stop calling her mother, you know, or the old lady, or the old man. If you want to actually walk in working with our babies and with anyone, then you need to start walking in your own talking and start to relook at decolonizing your, your head, decolonizing your reo. There's no such a thing as mum or dad. We have to look over here as tradition. Over here is modernism. This reo over here never belonged here. And here we are trying to have a modern conversation from a traditional viewpoint. It doesn't work unless you're living and walking in your talk. That is the most important thing. So here in the door of the, of the puku is the first door of the voice. It's that place where our kriya and our kroa, our kroa, you know, older in his wisdom, Slower in his corridor, deeper in his voice goes, Unlike the rangatahi, they will go, and his ure too slaps from side to side <laughs> instead of to the whare and back. That is the voice of uh, Paikorero still learning. <laughs> then you get the queer who will make her karanga rumble along the floor. And she cracks all the way through. There's lots to learn in this book because this is also the place that I had to go to to recognize all the pain I left inside and hid inside. Hence, I have a hernia, hence, I have a whole lot of things happening in my puku because that pain began to turn into those things. So I had to learn to go there and know that the voice of the tongue was something that was mine in order to be and not to be afraid of the voice of the tongue of the puku.
longer am afraid to weep whether you like it or not tough. Because I can hold my weeping and know that as I weep that pain out of my body, then I'm healing. You can sing your own soul into being. You know, it's easy to learn. If you're going to learn to sing the lullaby, then learn to sing the tangi. Hey, Dr. Yakwe. Yakoto. Hey. And we hold too much of that within. Hey. And we just breathe it in and hold our breath every time we think of pain that we've been through as babies. And our babies now are going through the same pain and we are not able to help because we cannot release our own. And if you think you can, how? And are you? That's the point. And you're working with our babies? We have to really, really get real in the world of our what we think is helping. Learn to sing in the first door. Learn to, because in that first door, the kuya kroa sit on either side of your pain. It is the most beautiful door to sing from. You learn to sing from that space. The second door is the door of the rangatahi. It's the door, and you guess, guess what? Your rangatahi, until somebody says to you, Oh, te na koe e kui. <laughs> You're talking to me? Oh my goodness, have I reached that status? And that is where it's at, people. No, the age doesn't do nothing. Age doesn't say a thing. I'm 72. It doesn't give me my right to be who you are, who I am, because it's the people that name you. And if they call me queen, then what an honour. Thank you. But the door of the rangatahi, so is that door of that loving, that loving kind. Do you know the kinds that, oh, you've got cross-legged every time you see a beautiful man, woman or a beautiful man walking down the street. It's that rangatahi exploration of learning, the door of the mana, the heart, and all of those things that go with falling in love and falling out of love. The only problem today is that we don't know how to love anymore. It's about fucking. Let's get it real. <laughs> it's not about knowing how to love. Hey, have a look at what we're doing. And hence, a lot of our women and are being abused in every way, form and matter. Hey, I know, because I come through that space. And I'm not the only one, and because I have come through that space, I can go back into that space, easy to find the healing that I did with learning about how I needed to be healed. And I come from a lived experience rather than from a head academic knowledge. But it's the door that sings a song when you're standing with your beloved and loving him like you do, like I do, and every time I, I sing this song, I sing it to my, my honey, I... He was Hawaiian and he loved this waiata and I used to hate it. For years I hated the same waiata because when you walked around as a kid you didn't probably, you know, like it. I, and my kind of loving and um, until I found out that this waiata was written by my, my grand, one of my uncles, a we um, paraire huata, all the way back down to there. They wrote this waiata because he fell in love with a woman far too young to be a woman. He went to ask for her hand in marriage and, she, and his people said no. Her people said no. But if you love her, you will wait for her for as long as it takes for her to be woman. My uncle stood on the other side of the Wayapu and, and get this, you Jarawa, it don't belong to you either. They stood on the other side of the Wayapu and he sang this wayata to her and I sing it to my honey with all the love. Just think of the wayata that you sing to yours. Po kare kare ana na wae o wayapu fiti atu ko e tama na di na wa na e e hi ne e ho ki mai ra ka 
give me that look <laughs> and that look was like mm. <laughs> but guess what my honey and I were in a relationship for 30 years and it was a non-sexual relationship and we learned to love and how was that can your imagination go anywhere you certainly don't need to love in those other ways. And those are the ways that we have forgotten. We need to go back to that and desexualize everything. Because everything is so sexualized, love is sexualized. If I told you I fell in love with my son who turned my life around and helped me to do that, what would you think? You'd lock me up in a loony bin because you so sexualize the word love. The third door, then, is the door of the kaki. It's this, it's this voice that I want you to look at in terms of uri uri. Ay, this is the door of the pepe, the door of the uri uri, the lullaby, from here. Ay, that's why you men that do the haka from here, that's why you get a pakaru korokoro, because you're supposed to be in your puku, your first door. Ain, do you watch all those ones with Mother Tini that come back? Ain, queer na. You know, gotta learn to sing. But this one is goes from the audio. It's from. It's very innocent. It's beautiful, and it's very soft. And it goes. Moi, moi, baby. It's from that voice. But you see, in the process of coming through all the doors that I'm going through, is that I had to learn to sing me back into being. Because the next voice, the next door, is the fourth door, is the door of the upoko, the door of the kranga, the door of the falsetto, way high up there in the air, falsetto. And it kind of goes like this, and you know, my papa would stand three gates down the road. And if you know what three gates down the road was, was miles away. And we'd have to stand at our house and karangatu, and he had to hear us. If he didn't hear us, we, we had to stay there until we got it right. So we learned as young women that we'd get it right first shot. So it took that time to think in the ubuko, up in the head. Think they heard me down the road? That's how hard it had to be. So I, I learned to sing through the four doors. 
And I was at the bottom of my father's barrel. This is a story, you know, because I had, look, I've got how many? I've got 23 brothers and sisters. I'm an only child, though. You want to work that one out? <laughs> my mother and father split. My mother had, had 11 and my father had 12. So I got those many. So when people ask me how many babies I got, I got, hang on, hang on. I got 23 brothers and sisters. Oh, I had about 600 babies. They look at you like with great horror. <laughs> because I think from a Māori viewpoint, I don't think from an individualistic little whānau. Whānau, we don't know how to even define whānau. We still think like pākehās. And that's your siblings and that's it. That's your whānau. Well, that's not your whānau. That is not the way we need to think. We need to really develop what our whānau is. So here's a question to you. If I was to ask you, which, which place do you think I'll sing to Mahani from? Which place, which door do I use to sing to Mahani from? Come on. <laughs> All you educated people. One, two, three, or four? Two, by the look of nah. <laughs> I want to sing from every door. Hey, see, he's got it wrong every door. He wants all of me, not just one part. Hello. Learn to love from all doors. <laughs> I'll fix you a lot up. So here's a way I think that can demonstrate to you that you can use your voice in all those places, okay? Here, I'm going to start with my manawa, to my honey. <laughs> sing from all those spaces. Or oh, now I need a cup of coffee over there, please. <laughs> so it's learning to sing. But you know, people, when you start to do this in practice, then what happens is that you begin to hear your voice. No one else is yours. Hang on. Just your voice. Hey, you begin to be free in learning how to put to that voice, your voice. And you can sing anything. I can sing a song to you and make up my own tune. I can tell you who I am without going core, core, core. I can go kohene wirangi toku ingoa. I can go kohene wirangi toku ingoa ki te taha o toku whai ano ka hungu nui. I can change it to whatever I want it to be because I have taken back my voice. You will no longer keep me silent. Hey, so you can play with that. And if you, don't tell me you can't sing. The atua didn't make you boring. <laughs> hey, they all get gifted to you. Your atua gifted, so gosh, use your voice. Hey, to write your ori ori. Hey, so I want to take you on this journey of these people. These are the people, these are the wahine that sing, that have voices, that give voice to us and Rangi Iria, is, she was the only other taonga pu oro woman that I know beside myself. And there are a couple of others now coming up in the ranks. Wahine Ma, you need to learn about the voice, especially about the taonga pu oro. Those four doors are the first kind of the taonga pu oro that can help write ori ori, that can help write motetia. Because it's not hard to write one because our, our tūpuna wrote it in a monotone. They didn't, they didn't travel too much down this modern waiata singing. It's just monotone. But you repeated that monotone. So you get a, a good voice that goes, that stays, goes something like, 
ko hinde wi rangi to ku ingo ano ka hungunu a ho that's a good space then you repeat that same do thing over and over and over again it's easy these women set that music in place for us as wahine ma as wahine we need to take back our our histories they walk with them because they were na wahine or na kaitiaki or na tonga pu oro before me i have to acknowledge them you see this is the goddess this is why we have to look at our tonga pu oro in terms of hinero katori the goddess of all flute music and she was this beautiful little butterfly that came out of that case moth i we have to learn these stories so all of those flutes the pukaya the putatara the putorino or oh no the putorino and all of those kowowo came out of nero katodi the goddess of all those flute music that's why we got to learn it wahine ma if you don't then you better hurry up and come and see me hine mona the o- the ocean itself i'm sick of hearing going to tangoro actually no we're <laughs> going to hine mona Tangaro uh, Hinemona had three wives. One was called Hansmans. One was called Coco, <laughs> <laughs> and that Coco was the safe waters. You know the old hill for the queer crower. They used to say to us as babies, "Hi to keep the Coco, go to the safe waters." They didn't say "Hi to keep, Hi to queer keep the horoi." That is a new hill. I we had to learn those old hill. Coco was the god of the safe waters, and then of course. Beyond the safe waters, you got Tangaro to the horizon, and then from the horizon thereafter, you got the Mona Nuiakua. See, she was great in the Mona. She needed all those to take care of her. She was vast, so, and she had Tonga Puru. All the shell people come from the, and this is Hine Putehue. All the gourd people came from out of that. All of these gourds are Hine Putehue, the goddess of. Of the hui, all of these thing. I bet you didn't know that. There's so much to learn in our in in all of our music that sings the soul back into being, and in order to write an oriori, a lullaby. In your books, you have a copy of all of this, people, in your bags, of oriori, which is defined, its definition. I always wanted to write one for my kids, but you know the reality of it all was I wasn't, I didn't speak Te Reo Māori. I wasn't fluent because I got a whack at school. You think I'm going to learn? Every time you got whacked, I was silent at school. I, so, but through Tai Pari Munro, a great orator of the north, I learned that an oriori had a beginning and middle and an end, just like a story, just like a piece of poetry. And I thought, ah. Oh. Also, you know, we had to learn about those old oriori sung by everybody else, and about what what. So I just wanted to learn how to write my own, my own for my own kids, and and I just wanted to do that. So I decided, okay. So what I have come up with in that book for you is a format that might help you write your own oriori for your babies, and that it comes from your heart. Here's the format. You begin to think and examine the environment around the birthing. Examples like、um, an early morning birth might invoke thoughts around birds chorusing, the morning calling the child from the womb, or the early morning sun rises strong and yellow over the sacred mountains. Or it might have a soft rain for cleansing the earth for the arrival of the child, the noon and what is happening at that time. All the way through the night, whenever the child is born, how are the how the elements are? How are they? You have to think about that. You see, our people were poetical, classical poetry, and they were very much a part of our natural world. We're not. We are so distant from it, and we need to get back to that very basic of being involved. And I grow a rongoa forest in the back of my house in Thirty One Blackburn Street. So I can be in touch with Tani, the Wild New York Tani. I so I can be in those elements and in those el- that place of that garden are all my pito fenua buried there, of my mobuna, where you put yours. 
How do you do? Do you do your puto whenua? What do you do? Hey. So it's, it's about learning how to put that first thing together, looking at um, an example in Taipari's ori ori to his twins. He says, welcome little son and daughter. Let me greet you who have come from the swollen house of man. He's a bit sexist, but you know, we'll get over it. It was your ancestress, Hinetitama, who read the threshold of Hinenuitipo, so you might emerge from the spring into the light of the world. And that's what he's writing. I mean, the second thoughts might be around the Atua, the gods, the goddesses, or if you are Christian, it might be about God, who you think are a part of the, this creation and pres present in the birth. And you might also want to think about the people who are present at the birth and their roles in that birth to help bring forth that child. And what gifts do your people bring? Hey, besides just watching you give birth. <laughs> what gifts do they? This is my beautiful baby that I write this ori ori for. She's 35 years old and she told me to stop calling her baby because she can function like an adult. <laughs> and she goes, and so I start by calling her, her daughter by name and saying, your name is Merete Ani Waniwa Kohu. Before you came, you ha were, there were your three grandmothers who had special gifts of, of the heavenly waters. Merete Arama, who was the controller of the tides. Waitara, wisdom storms, wild storms of the seas and Ngawai Koko, calm and peaceful waters. See, you were born amid these strong and calm waters. And those were the queer. You see, that's the, that one, two, three, third queer is her great grandmother. The next one over uh, over the other side of the of Maharaya Winiata is her great great grandma. So she has this gift of these photos, just the photos alone that will tell her journey. People, we don't give you thinking about looking after our babies and start writing them their stories. Start talking to them their puraho. Start telling them their whakapapa gently. Little, little as babies start singing their weyata so that they can know what they grow up with. And they have a song to sing when they are down and out because I grew up with a weyata that I will leave with you at the end of my nan left to me. The next thing is that you might want to think about her name, his name, and talk the history of that name. It is, if it is a tupuna name, if it is a family name, is it, is it, a name that her, his grandmother, grandfather, mother, father, or anyone else has named her him. However, that name has meaning. The name has history. Don't be like my brother and name his daughter Tambalina after racehorse. <laughs> Ask yourself. And then my cousin names his son Spock. Aye. That's why we are so far away from our true places. The fourth way is that you might think about what you as parents give the baby. The baby's papa, the baby's sacred stories. It's okay, we can buy clothes anytime. But not all times we'll be able to give the papa written up in a little scroll in that book that will go to that child at its 21st. <coughs> I used to record my babies singing, oh they were flat ass. And my son used to make up his own song as he'd go along, and I'd record that every time. And he would tell, my, he would tell on me. I, my mama went down to make the fosters and figured it out the car. Mm. So I was always afraid of him getting up and sharing a song. <laughs> then you finally invite her or him into the world of humanity. When you use classic Māori language, your English also should reflect that classic nature in te reo Māori. You don't have to stop yourself because you cannot speak Māori. You can always find the one of your own friends or whānau or tribal elders who can whaka Māori to your writing. Simple. Because otherwise it stops us from doing things like that. And we've got to stop being stopped by our own fear. I wrote an ori ori for my daughter way before I learned that there was a format of writing of ori ori. Though we have many examples from our tūpuna who composed all the time using their beautiful language, the ori ori they left are lessons for us to compose for our own children.
Tiani Wani Wan. Kete Mehi Kyakwe, Miss Pa. Greeting you. Greetings to you, Miss Pa. Mere Tiani Wani Wan. Toing wa ko mere tiani wani wa kohu. I mua o tō taenga mai i ngā rangi. E tū ana nā pau kuia e toru o ngā wai o ngā rangi. Ko mere tiarama. The controller of the tide. Kei te mihi ki a koe, mis pa mere te ani wani wa, ko tō ingoa ko mere te ani wani wa, ko hui mua o tō tainga mai ki ngā rangi e tū, ana nā pau koe a e toru o nga wai o ngā rangi ko mere te See, you could just make it up. It don't matter. How would you know that it wasn't what I was supposed to be thinking, eh? Ko waitara ko ngā wai koukou. Ana, kei roto i enei wai kaha, wai pūrea, wai marino ka puta te tanipa. Tō ingoa, tō mana. Nau ano e tui tō korowai tāwharau. Tetehi taha he mana aihe. Ko wai tara ko ngā wai kauka Ana ki rato i e nei wai kaha Wai pūrea wai marino ka puta te tanifa Tō ingoa tō mana no ano i tui Tō koro wai tawharau Te tahi naha he mana aihe That's the story of the Natikahu Nunu woman who had the power to call up the aihe. Nana, ngā wai koukou. Tu mai koe tu ahua, he tohu ki te ao, anei o taonga e puta mai, ngā wai tarato i ti pauname, ngā wai koukou te maramatanga, ki te waihanga tou ake kohanga, ko mere te arama tō kaha. And those are the gifts that they brought to that whole, to this oriori. You can see how it's easy it is to actually begin to write an oriori. For your own. Ki te tū hei rangatira i te wā o tō whanaunga tanga ki te ao marama. I tau tō pito mai i ngā rangi, ki te whenua o taumata, kei ngā wai o kōpu rererua e tohu. You were blessed by that wai, by that waters of kōpu rererua. These are the gifts of my mother and my father to her. E taua tongi i heria taua ano whaia ki te tamahine, tamahine ki te whaia Nga tau kuia ko hine atarau i ta painga tau ingoa ko te aniwaniwa Ko te piatatanga, ko te wawao, e tai mai koe i te hunga o ue nuku anei te aniwaniwa tau ingoa Ingoa, kei a koe te mana Te tiakitanga o ngā whaia maha o te ao. And there you go, people, if you're reading the, the, the other side, you will understand the story. And that was given to my baby. Ko hine wīrangi, tuatahi o hine atarau, tō whaia, ko te kawero tō māma, ko awa matiu, ko tōna kōku i... Puta mai koe. Ko koe taku piri, taku pēpū. He kōtiro kaha, he kōtiro atāhua. Me tū koe ki roto i tō mana. Kōtiro tō rangatira tanga. So that's what you're gifting your babies. 
all the way back through that line of great, great Wahine. Ko hoki hi koitanga he ua e waipuke ana te wai. Ko rongo koe ki ngā a fio fio o te wai. Engari tō wairua wāte ana i hapai chia koe ki te marama. Lo te mea, kei a koe te mana. Engari, kei raro tōmi koe. I tō taku korowai aroha o hene wīrangi, Maranga mai tu tonu pikiake ki to taumata ki te faiao ki te ao marama. <coughs> Ti hei mauri ora. What kind of gift do you leave your babies? Uh, your babies, not anybody else's baby. Really, what kind of gift do you leave for your baby? What kind of ori ori do you leave with your babies? And it's really important to know that it's actually simple, more simple than you think. It's not difficult to write some words for your babies and start now from your oldest down. Every one of them need a ori ori. They need the gifts, they need their stories, they need their pūrākau, they need their whakapapa, they need you. So, awaken the gifts in you. You were utterly gifted. They didn't make you boring like I told you. Just have a desire so that your children grow safely within their culture and all the gifts you leave them. See how many ori ori I have to write? So I wanted to leave that with you with a waiata that I always sing anyway because it's a waiata that my nan left me and what kind of waiata do you leave yours? To know that as I went through my life, if it wasn't for that waiata, I'd have been dead a long time ago. Okay. And it's one I sing so that I can awaken my soul into knowing that I'm beautiful, I'm strong, and I have every right to live. And I will continue to write ori ori. I'd love to see your ori ori being written too. E to dance the dance of life ehine, because they will if you do not dance the dance of life the sea will pick you up and throw you to all of those namu namus that live in the sand so I learned to dance the dance of life then I'll go to me I'll